Hello and happy Friday. I hope you're doing well. This is Fridays with Brandon and today is episode number 83 of Fluke Fridays. What we're going to be talking today is actually not the thermal imager, but it's a component or um, a property called emissivity that can either help you uh, make more accurate thermal imaging readings, more accurate temperature readings from a thermal imager, or an infrared gun. So it really doesn't matter as long as you're using infrared technology to measure temperature. Emissivity is really important, and we're going to talk about that today so that you don't make a mistake thinking you're having one temperature when you really have another. So what is infrared radiation, or what is infrared technology in measuring temperature? So infrared technology, right, this camera right here in the middle, that is measuring infrared radiation. And what does that come from? It's coming from all of the surfaces. So we're not measuring ambient temperature, we're actually measuring surface temperature, um, what those surfaces are releasing infrared radiation from. So how efficiently that surface releases infrared radiation makes a big difference on what the camera sees. So the more efficient it releases infrared radiation, the better or more accurately we can read that surface. The less efficient, the less accurate we can confidently say what that temperature is. Okay. So what I have today, I've got an infrared camera or fluke TI-480 Pro thermal imager, and I've got a putty knife. And I'm going to use this putty knife because it's very reflective and has a very low emissivity. So what is emissivity? It's almost the measurement, like I said, it is how a fit, uh, effective or efficient something releases infrared radiation, but how is it measured? It's measured from one to zero. So one is a perfect emitter. That would be what would they call a black body when in calibration terms. And completely no um, representation or com no emissivity, very poor emitter would be zero. Now in practical terms, if you get to 0.6 or so, you are at a really, really low emissivity. And you're not going to be able to get a very accurate reading, or maybe not an accurate reading at all, from something that's a low emitter like this putty knife. Or potentially like the end of a fuse, or a lug that's shiny and bright, or the outside of a stainless steel um, container of some type. So the question is, how do we use an infrared camera to measure this when it's not releasing infrared radiation effectively? So we're going to talk about how you can combat that. Now, before I get into that, I do want to talk about uh, more practically, like what does that mean to be a, releasing infrared radiation effectively or not? So let's talk about some practical examples. A very, very high emitter would be like a cast iron skillet. Think about that like cast iron lodge skillet, you get that hot over a fire or over an oven and you hold that up, you could hold that several feet away from your face or your hand and you could feel that radiation, right? You could feel that heat hitting you. On the flip side, if you have an iron for ironing your clothes and it's all chrome, you can hold your hand almost all the way up to it before you feel any heat coming off of that. Now they could both be the same temperature, but one, you can have your hand so close to it and can't feel any heat. The other one, you could be feet away and feel the heat. Why is that? It all comes down to its emissivity of the surface. How efficiently that surface throws off its radiation. So that's an example of why like um, but motorcycles have chrome on all of their um, pipes and stuff. One is to look cool, another is it doesn't feel as hot unless you actually touch it and burn yourself, right? Because the radiation, you don't feel that warning signal of the radiation as you get closer. Our cameras and other folks' cameras, same technology, can only measure what we can feel, that radiation that's being emitted. So it, it will give us a more true representation of that surface temperature if it's a high emitter. Okay, so today we're going to take a putty knife, I'm going to go to the desk here in a second, and we're going to show you that it just reflects the temperature, and then we're going to show you how if we put a piece of tape on it, we can actually change the emissivity of the surface where the tape is and get a more accurate reading of this high emissive or low emissive surface. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so first I'm going to use the side of the putty knife that does not have any tape on it. And you can see it's saying about 64 degrees Fahrenheit is what we're measuring. And the 
table temperature is about 67, 68 degrees. Well, these have, this has been sitting on the table for a long time. Why is it different temperature? It's because it's actually getting a reflection off the wall and the wall is cooler. Now, if I hold my hand over here, my hand is up in the air, right? But it's seeing the reflection of my hand. And all of a sudden now it's saying, let me see if I can do this right. Now it's saying the temperature is 86 degrees or higher, 88 degrees in the center where my hand is. Well, we know the temperature of that putty knife hasn't changed, but it was giving us a much different reading, right? Okay, so let's turn it over and we can now see it with the tape on here. And we see the center temperature is about 69 degrees. And we see over here, it's 64 degrees. And I'm looking at the temperature right here in this little square up here. Now we'll hold it over that 69 degree area I'll put my hand over here again, and you can see, uh, if I hold it correctly, you can see it really didn't change the temperature, but it does on this side, right, with the reflection, okay? So it's giving us a more accurate, true representation of what that surface is because we changed the surface, um, and, and when we change the surface, we change its emissivity. Now, I'm also going to heat this up with a blow dryer and show you the difference. Um, so that's pretty cool. And then at the end, we'll talk about other ways you can change the surface emissivity. So I'm probably going to fast forward this or at least mute it. Okay, so now you can see when I put the crosshairs on the tape, it's saying 125. But on this, it's still saying, you know, 72. So it went up a little bit but not very much. So it's not giving us a very accurate temperature, it's almost 50 degrees difference, right? That's pretty significant. And it all comes down to changing that surface um, emissivity. So when we change the surface, we change the emissivity and it can help you not be a level two thermographer where you're controlling the back temperature. And because of just changing the surface allows you to easily get a more accurate temperature. Okay, I'm gonna swing it back up to see me. Okay, so we showed one way, or I showed one way you can change the, the surface is putting a piece of tape on it, electrical tape or some other tape. That will change that surface temperature and help you get a more accurate reading um, when you're using infrared technology. The other thing you can do is you could paint the surface. Obviously, you wouldn't want to paint energized circuits, but there are times that people will paint uh, like microchip boards because they want a uniform thing so they can see what area is heating up without worrying about emissivity. They're gonna paint it a flat color. So you can paint it or put tape, but at the end of the day, the more dirty or the more dull a surface is, the better chance you have of getting a really accurate representation of the surface that you're measuring. The shinier it is, the less accurate. So if you were looking at a stainless steel tank, you could put some tape on the side of it or paint a strip on the side of it and easily see the level of the tank if it was a liquid in there and that was a different temperature from the liquid to the, um, from the liquid to the air inside the tank, let's say. But you wouldn't be able to do that in a totally stainless steel tank. It just won't represent the temperature. So it'd be really hard to see. I hope this was helpful. It's a little bit different than normal. We didn't talk about product, but we did talk about something that really makes our products either work for you or be frustrated and you could step on a landmine and not understand why you're getting weird readings. So have a great weekend. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like if you like it. It doesn't cost you anything. It helps me and helps the channel, helps to get the message out. Have a great weekend. Take care.